You are welcome to another video of Juniper Security Associate course. In this section, I will talk about Juniper SRX IPsec VPN fundamental. IPsec VPN is a security framework used to secure remote connections. It uses cryptographic algorithm to secure traffic, so they cannot be eavesdropped or manipulated by unauthorized users. In this section, we will talk about theoretical concept of IPsec VPN. In the next section, we will see some configuration examples. When two or more parties decide to secure the remote connection, parties must first negotiate about the security algorithm and keys that they will use to secure the communication. This is the first step of secure communication, and it is done through a protocol, dynamic protocol named IKE or Internet Key Exchange. Then they can use the agreed algorithm and keys to secure the connection. This is the second step of secure communication and it is done through IPsec protocol. IPsec itself is just a framework and there are two protocols that belong to the IPsec framework, AH and ESP. With AH, the confidentiality of data is not important to you and only the integrity of data is important. In other words, you just want to make sure that the receiver is receiving exactly what the sender has sent and nothing has been changed on the pass. You choose ESP when both confidentiality and integrity are important to you. In other words, in addition to integrity, it is also important to you that data is not readable by unauthorized users. If it is, then choose ESP to secure the connection. As I've explained, IKE is the first step of IPsec secure communication. The goal is to negotiate security algorithm and key used to secure data itself. IKE protocol runs over UDP port 500. It used two phases. In the first phase, IKE negotiate security algorithm and key to secure IKE of second phase. This phase is called IKE security association. In the second phase of IKE, which is secured by algorithm and key negotiated in the first phase, IPsec protocol, AH or ESP, cryptography algorithm used in IPsec, and also key to encrypt data itself is negotiated. This is called IPsec Security Association. IKE Security Association is the name of phase I, and IPsec Security Association is the name of phase two. Security Association or SA itself is an important word in IPsec protocol and it means that the two ends of the connection agree on the algorithm and key to secure the communication. IKE has two different modes. IKE main mode is used mostly in site-to-site -side VPN communication in which both sites have static IP addresses. And IKE aggressive mode is used mostly in remote access VPN communication in which remote users have dynamic IP addresses. In IKE main mode, six packets are negotiated between two ends of IPsec connection. The first two packets are intended to negotiate cryptography algorithm used to secure the second phase of IKE. The next two packets are designed to negotiate the key that is used to encrypt the communication in the second IK phase. The key is negotiated using Diffie-Hellman algorithm. The key is then used to encrypt the second phase using symmetric encryption algorithm. IPsec endpoints use the last two packets to authenticate each other. Authentication is done based on authentication key which is manually configured in both sides. It is also called pre-shared K or PSK. Also, the first four packets are negotiated in clear text 
what Diffie Hellman algorithm itself is safe and nothing to worry about. The last two packets are authenticated and encrypted. The second mode of IK phase ion is aggressive mode. In IK aggressive mode, only three packets instead of six packets are negotiated. And it is mostly used in remote access IPsec VPN in which the users have dynamic IP addresses. Aggressive mode is of course faster than the main mode but less secure because it reveals the unencrypted authentication hash of pre-shared key. When phase I negotiation is completed, we now have a secure channel in which all traffic are secured based on algorithm and key negotiated in phase I. In the second phase of IK negotiation, IPsec protocols, AH or ESP, cryptographic algorithm used in AH or ESP, and also the key to encrypt data is also negotiated. This phase is called IPsec Security Association. The second phase of IK is also called IK Quick mode. The second phase include only three packets. In the first two packets, the following information are negotiated, which protocol to use, AH or ESP, and with which parameters, tunnel mode or transport mode. In this course, we will use always tunnel mode. We will not talk about transport mode. Which traffic must be secured, in other words, proxy ID. SPI or security parameter index. I will talk more about it in a few minutes. And negotiate a new optional Diffie-Hellman key for data encryption. It is optional and the same key negotiated in IKE phase I can be used for data encryption. The third packet is only to acknowledge the second packet. SPI or security parameter index is one of the parameters that are negotiated in IKE phase two. The question is for what do we use SPI parameter in IPC communication? To answer that question, I will ask another question. If we receive a secure and encrypted IPsec packet, how can we understand which cryptographic algorithm and key must be used to decrypt and authenticate the packet. For each IKE phase two negotiation, a record is created in a table with SPI as an index, which is a random number. And all negotiated protocols, algorithm, and key are added to the record. When an encrypted packet is received in addition to the packet source IP address. There is SPI parameter in IPsec encapsulated packet and in plain text. According to the SPI, we find the entry in the table in which IPsec protocol, cryptographic algorithm, and key are stored. Then we will decrypt and authenticate the packet based on these information. To secure IP packet, we have to deliver IP packet to the IPsec protocol stack to re-encapsulate the packet for security purposes. Depending on the configured IPsec protocol, one of two protocols, AH or ESP, will be used. With AH only authentication information, HMAC or digital signature will be added to the header of the packet, so receiver with inspection Authentication header can make sure of the integrity of the packet and also sender of the packet. With AH, payload is not encrypted. In the previous section, we learned how authentication information is added to the packet and how it is processed and verified on the receiver side. With ESP, authentication information HMAC or digital signature will be added to the ESP trailer and not header. With ESP, the content of the packet will also be encrypted. SPI in both 
AH and ESP are inserted in the header of AH or ESP. We have already discussed about the importance of SPI parameter. You can also see that there are two IP headers in IPsec encapsulation. Inner IP header is the IP address of real source and destination IP addresses. As an example, servers inside the main office and branch office are the real source and destination IP addresses. Outer IP header is the IP address of IPsec, panel and points. In our example, Juniper SRX in the main office and branch office with IPsec tunnel implementation are source and destination IP address of outer IP header. The other point in this figure is that with AH, the entire packet except layer 2 information, which is not displayed in the figure, are inside authentication hashing process. But with ESP, the outer IP header is not completely inside the process of authentication and hashing process. With ESP, it also shows that all payload information, including ESP trailer and inner IP header, are encrypted. The last point in ESP is that in the source, the packet is first encrypted and then authentication information is added. How did I understand it? Because authentication information is not encrypted. The reason is that when the packet is received, the authentication information is processed first. If the authentication information is verified, then the packet will be decrypted because decryption requires high process and memory utilization. Of course, if authentication is not verified, the packet will not be decrypted and it will be discarded.